All right, so that will conclude the NX fundamentals portion here. And next we'll be taking a look at the sketch solver and the new sketch user interface. Okay, so let's take a look at the Sketch Solver User Interface update here for NX 1926. So the new Sketch Solver significantly reduces design time for you, automatically finds relationships between the curves, it will alleviate the need to fully constrain sketches with geometric constraints. Uh, all of those types of constraints have been replaced with relations, or what are called relation constraints. Relationship finding can be fine-tuned by the user. Relations can be made persistent for specific workflows when required. Streamlined workflow for creating and editing dimensions. Constraints can be temporarily overridden as well. So other supported workflows and functionality for the new Sketch Solver user interface include synchronous edit cross-section, 2D imports, and layouts. So to activate the new Sketch Solver, by default, the Sketch Solver and user interface is not going to be used in NX 1926. This is an option. Uh, you will have to use it or turn it on with the file utilities feature toggles. So inside the feature toggles dialog, you do a search for sketch, select the use the new solver and user interface for sketching option. Under the state column, right click on the word off and select the on tag or option there. Once you change this setting, you must restart your NX session before you see the changes take, a play, uh, take effect with your NX environment. The new Sketch Solver user interface looks like this. So the new Sketch Solver and user interface simplifies the sketch process by allowing the user to create new profiles and curves while automatically creating relations between the curves as they're being created. So the toolbar has been simplified to allow easy access for essential tools needed for sketching designs. The new solve group allows for easy activation or deactivation of constraints and dimensions by selecting the different options. The different types of constraints and dimensions are clearly identifiable in the graphics display. Closed sketch profiles are going to be shaded for clear indication to the user that the profile has been closed. Once the profile is completed, the user can manipulate the curves in various ways with the ability to relax constraints and dimensions and allow for easy editing of the curves to quickly modify their design. So I'll do a quick demo and show the new Sketch Solver user interface now. So I'm going to jump over to my NX 1926 here. And I will show you how to turn that option on. So under the File, Utilities, Feature Toggles, You'll have to type in sketch up here. You can navigate down and try and find it in the list or you can just quickly type in sketch in the command finder here. And the very first option and the only option available here is the use the new solver and user interface for sketching. Uh, my current state, I have that turned on, but if it was off, I would go ahead and select right click on that, uh, that state and select the on category here. In my case, it says off because I already have it on, so I'm not gonna do that. So I'm going to go ahead and cancel this. Once you do change that setting, you need to restart your NX session to see the new Sketcher solver and that updated user interface as well. Okay, so I'm going to quickly create a sketch here with the new solver. So I'm going to do a file. I already have a part open here, so I'm just going to do a new sketch. I'm going to go into the sketch function and set up my sketch here on my plane. So this is the new Sketch user interface in Solver here. The simplified Sketch toolbar here. So a lot of tools have been simplified due to the fact that the new Solver can solve for a lot of different types of conditions when you're creating these different profiles or Sketch curves. So the first thing I'm going to do is create a profile here. And you will notice that there is a vertical axis and a horizontal axis represented by the dashed lines here as well. So this is new to the interface and allows you to quickly pick a horizontal or a vertical axis here. So I'm just gonna quickly start sketching a profile of my shape here. And as I do continue to sketch this part, you will see 
I am able to pick up on the ends of different lines. You'll see there's direct relationship there with that dashed line to the opposite side. And I'll just continue coming around and creating a shape here. And come back down. And complete that profile. Once I've completed a profile, you can see it is filled in or shaded with that blue color here. You can turn that op off with the options here. And there is an option to uh, turn that off if you don't like that uh, appearance there. And I believe that is under the preferences for your sketch. So once you've created that profile, we'll take a look at what that has done. Uh, we have a closed profile indicated by that interior blue color. If I go ahead and select one of these curves, immediately the new uh, operation for the solver is when you click a curve, you will see a dimension that is generated here as well as a series of relations that have been generated for the user automatically. So if you look here, I do have a relation here. It found the relation, an offset relation, and that is related to these curves down here. It also has uh, down below, I can see I have a horizontal relation found here, and I also have a collinear relation found here with the other side, this line on the other side of the part symmetrically. So if you want to add a dimension, all you have to do is select a curve and you'll get your dimension. If you want to activate this dimension, all you have to do is select that dimension. I'm going to double click that again and you can type in a value here if you want to. So I can type in 120 millimeters and you can see that change or affect my geometry. When you do select those dimensions or activate those by double clicking on them, you have the additional option of dragging these handles on the ends of your leader lines, and that's going to also control or change the length of that dimension and my corresponding geometry there. You can also relax dimensions or these relations by simply left mouse button down, select those relations, and when it goes into that magenta color, you are, have relaxed those dimensions or those relations on your part. So that's going to go ahead and allow me to drag. I should be able to drag let me go ahead, go back in here and relax that. And now I should be able to drag this curve appropriately. So when you go ahead and turn off those relations, it's going to suppress those in a way where you can actually go ahead and start dragging your geometry and modify uh, the different elements of those curves. So I'm going to continue creating a uh, circle up top here. So let's go ahead and create a circle. And I'm gonna go ahead and pick up on a, uh, the horizontal center line here and just drag out and create a quick circle. And I'm gonna create one more circle and place that down on the outside of that arc. So if we take a look at these two arcs, there is an immediate relationship or relations that was generated between the two. So you can see this offset relation was found between those two arcs and they do have a direct relationship to one another at this point. And as I drag the outside arc, you can see the inside arc is also going uh, the equivalent distance for that drag. You will notice when you do select one of these arcs, you will get a dimension, and you can see that as an approximate type dimension. So if I, if I drag this, you can see that approximate value changing as well. Until I actually select on that dimension to accept it, or create it, it will not be created. So I need to come over and select that dimension and activate that dimension. And I can quickly type in a value here to modify my arc or my diameter. Now that I've typed in that value, I have a permanent dimension and I can no longer drag to resize this arc. And you will see when you have two overlapping enclosed parameters, you will get a different shade of blue. So you can quickly, easily see if there's overlapping uh, parameters or enclosed shapes on top of one another. So let's go ahead and continue creating some lines here. I'm going to come down and create a, uh, a horizontal or a line off of here, a tangent, and come down to my base piece. And I'll come over here and create a second line and come down to that, uh, that base piece as well. So if I want to quickly connect these or enclose this, volume or parameter. So I'm going to go ahead and uh, do a quick trim. Trim away some material here. Oops. Do an undo. I didn't want to do the interior there. 
I just want to go ahead and trim away um, this exterior part here. So I'm going to go ahead and trim this portion and trim this portion here. So once again, you can see it has connected those shapes and I do have an enclosed uh, parameter here. And I also have my circle on the inside of that. We can see very easily. Okay, so if you want to add some additional dimensions, all you have to do is pick some different areas on the part that you want to start constraining uh, with a dimension. So if I come over to this arc, I can come down to the center point and then come over to the top of my base piece here and I can quickly create a dimension that way. Once you double click on that, you can go ahead and type in a given value here. So I'll type in 120 and accept that change. So if you want to relax the relations that are created automatically for you, you do have an option up here to select relax the relations. And you can also relax your dimensions with this icon up here on the solver toolbar or the solve toolbar. So if I go ahead and select a couple of these curves and relax the relations on those, um, I should be able to modify those, those curves independently now. So that offset, uh, that offset relation that was on this curve has been relaxed. And now I can independently drag this and change the size of this diameter here. So if I come back in, I turn relaxed relations off. You can see again, I have my offset relation that has been found between those two arcs. And I can still drag that because I have not constrained it yet. So we're gonna go ahead and add a few more fillets in here real quick. So I'm gonna click here, create a few fillets between these surfaces here. And I'm gonna undo that real quick. I just wanna go ahead and make that a little bit smaller. And now what I want to do is go ahead and create uh, additional dimensions. So in this case, I'm going to create a dimension from this to here. And now I'm going to go ahead and relax a few relations uh, on this part. Okay, that's what I was trying to do there. I wanted to relax that point on a curve. So now I can actually modify and change the angle on this bracket piece here. And you can see how I can quickly make that modification. I can go either direction. If I want to make a change and go this direction and reverse the, uh, the angle on that, I can simply uh, drag that geometry now. It does maintain its relationship uh, based on the dimensions I have applied to it as well as some of the relations that are currently still maintained on that part. So that's how you can create these sketches with the new sketch, solver, and user interface. On your toolbar up above, you do have a sketch scene bar that is located up above. When you do select different pieces of geometry here, uh, these two curves, for instance, you can go up here and uh, add some of those different relations if they have not been automatically added for the user. So you can select some of these different options. I can make those two sides parallel. And now I have a parallel relationship between these two edges here. And you can see that relationship changing as I move this part. Okay, so that is the new sketch user interface and solver and NX 1926. All right, so the sketch uh, can also be used. This new solver can be used with imported geometry as well.